अन अकेडमी लेट्स क्रैक इट Hello, welcome to this video by the Anacademy team where I will talk to you about the last 3 months of your preparation. A brief introduction about me. I'm Hazi Krashpal and I scored IIR 6th in J Advanced 2020. I'm currently studying CS at IIT Bombay and I can't wait for the lockdown to be over so that I can get back to the campus. So just a quick point before we get on with the video if at the end of the video you find the advice useful remember to like subscribe and share the video also ring the bell for notifications as there'll be many more useful videos on this channel and I'll make repeated appearances so before we get on with the advice that is subject specific i just want to talk about some common themes that i like to follow i like to follow for my preparation when i was getting ready for gay advance so and the first and most important one is to start working on or to start revising any short notes that you may have made in the second phase or you know the first revision plan and this is really helpful because it helps to put everything that you've learned into your own word and in a summarized short as the name suggests version and this will be really helpful when you want to revise like three days before the exams you won't be overwhelmed by the huge number of textbooks and notebooks that you've read over the years you'll just have a couple of pages to go through for each subject by my card And the next thing I want to talk about is to limit your breaks, especially in the last few months of your preparation. This will really help to set you in a mood for problem solving, and you'll tend to look for relaxation through problem solving instead of any other means like television or music or social media. So, if you really limit your breaks, then you'll become more connected with the subject, and trust me, that will really help you in the final day of the exam. Right? Uh, the next thing that our physics teachers used to say a lot was to build your momentum. That is to say that the pace at which you solve questions and the number of questions or exam papers you solve in a day should keep on steadily increasing until the day of the exam so you shouldn't start off with like two papers a day but by the time the exam is just around the corner you're solving only one paper in a week right that's not good so the physics teachers always used to tell us to build our momentum increase our momentum so this always improve the speed at which you're solving questions and increase the amount of load that you take on per day and the next thing i want to talk about and the final thing which happens to a lot of us is to avoid having any second thoughts if you don't have second thoughts then mission accomplished right well done to you and the professors that took care of you during this time but if you're like me and you have a couple of second thoughts it's okay it's completely normal and in the last few days of any journey anybody can have them because we're just so exhausted from all the effort and it's very common to start thinking is engineering really meant for me is j advanced really meant for me Probably shouldn't give you that many examples, but the point is to avoid second thoughts. Convince yourself that J Advanced or whatever exam it is that you're preparing for is exactly the right choice for you. It's the thing that you wanted to two years ago, and it's the thing that will get you to your goal finally. So avoid any second thoughts at all. Now we'll move on to subject-specific advice, and I want to start by talking about math because I had a lot of problems with math during my preparation. So. any advice that i picked up over the years is directly from my prof and in that case it's the most uh, it's the oldest advice and as we all know advice age as well much like wine so the first advice i want to give you in math is to know your formula right a lot of people that are good in math they have this uh, idea of being some sort of math demigod so they don't really want to memorize anything in math they think memorization is more for chemistry people right and that distinction should also vanish over time i'm a math person i'm a chemistry person you should be an all rounder towards the end so learn to apply anything that you picked up for chemistry and math as well and in this case that's memorization in certain cases like uh, matrices or vectors there are simple very simple algorithms to solving few questions an example would be the system of equation in matrices i remember there was a very simple algorithm for this if the determinant is zero then it's complicated if it's non zero there's a unique solution so but i never wanted to learn that advice i always wanted to examine the equations in the exam and see what i can make out of them see if i can find some parallel playing and that used to waste time because i would always think what do i need to check first right and that takes up time and you can't afford to lose even a second in the final exam so if there are questions that can be 100% solved by using simple algorithms learn those algorithms or learn those formulas in vectors there was a formula that i avoided for a long time before getting bested by a lot of questions in the exam and finally having to memorize it and that was the square of a scalar product 
the box of a b c whole square is a determinant a dot a a dot b a dot c that's all i didn't want to learn it but uh, over time i got a lot of questions which could be solved in like a single step with that formula and my math teacher recommended it to me over time and i finally learned it. so the point is to learn the formula in math too don't ignore the formula just because they're for math and yeah i talked a lot about that but it's important so and the next thing is to have a fixed priority of method this is about building your own algorithms even in questions where algorithms aren't really there so and my favorite example for this advice is integration integration is a very wide has a very wide uh, range of methods to solve the question right there's partial fractions for algebraic questions and then there's integration by parts and then what else there's the direct you know looking and doing as some people call it so you need to have a fixed order in which you approach integration questions you can't look at a question and directly try integration by part for like 10 minutes and then realize it could have it was supposed to be done by partial fractions so have those key you know observations that will tell you which method is suitable for a question and approach the any question from that topic in that order of method so that's the second advice for math and last one is to have cumulative practice problems every day i cannot emphasize this enough any of your professors cannot emphasize it enough math is a very practical subject you cannot read you know the whole of sengage for every day and think that you'll ace the math exam you need to practice problems in fact a person who has done only problems although i don't recommend that you should read a fair amount of theory and learn a fair amount of formula as it is but on average a person who has done more problems than theory is better at math in general so yes you have to keep the formula and the algorithms and your fixed priority in mind but you shouldn't give up with the math i had a i had a bad habit of doing this i would spend so much time you know crafting my short notes and making sure every formula was written beautifully in them and i would spend very little time on practice that started to catch up with me in i think the last two months of my preparation and uh, my math teacher didn't say it because he was a very nice guy but i eventually picked it up and i confessed to him of sorts and he made he assured me that i'll get back to it if i practice just now so don't give up on practice in math cumulative practice problems every day so move on to physics now and i want to start by saying that even in physics there are certain chapters where there are a lot of formulae and people again think of themselves as some sort of gods and they'll derive the formula in the exam that never works there is far too much pressure and far too little time in the exam to derive even you know the formula for magnetic not magnetic um, electrostatic or a gravitational field due to a rod as simple as that you can mess up very easily you might take the power to be a cube for some reason when you're under pressure you do weird things right i used to take two cubed as six a lot of the times so don't keep any formula to be derived in the exam memorize as many of those formulae as you can and make sure you remember what they are for right? don't confuse the ring with the test that's a classic rookie mistake so even in physics you need to learn what the formulae are and that will help you a great deal in the exam next thing i want to talk about in physics is to know your tricks and no i'm not suggesting that you write the formulae on a couple of playing cards and take them into the examination hall what i'm talking about in physics at least is the leverage symmetry that's a big point in physics especially in uh, rc circuits and electrical electric electric current those chapters especially with the resistor problems and the 3d problems there's a lot of symmetry that you can use and solve the problem in a lot fewer steps than you would without symmetry so you need to know the leverage symmetry and you know it can cut you a lot of work sometimes you have to in mechanics you have to check whether an object is massless or not and then proceed from that but if you just use symmetry you'll cut yourself that extra work so you should know how to use symmetry and if your peers are doing it don't ignore it and don't tell yourself that oh no i have a way to do it so i don't need to learn their way if their way is even you know a fraction of a second quicker than yours you should know it because it's a competitive exam right and the next thing i want to talk about is ncrt so it's emphasized a lot for chemistry not so much for physics but when i was preparing for mains at least i had to go through ncrd physics twice and i can assure you there were some parts that are often skipped in the regular classes and even in the coaching classes that ncrd physics talks about and you know they can come as a direct question as well i'm not sure if they have come because i haven't really checked the archives for that but i'm sure there was stuff that i didn't know at all before reading ncrd and there's a good chance that in the exam if that showed up and i had zero idea what that concept was related to i would skip that question so if you've you know read that one dark or secluded page of ncrd that no other student has looked at and 
that question shows up. This is very, this is a lot of wishful thinking, but you get what I'm saying, right? So if you just have read NCRD carefully, then you'll be fine with that question. And the last thing I want to talk about in physics is to pay attention to or not ignore your speed issues. A lot of the people have a very clear idea about the subject, so they hardly look at the chapter. Like I know people who will solve every mechanics question starting from F bar is equal to MA bar, and they think they're very connected with the subject, and that's great. But if everybody else is using a shortcut, right? If there's that formula M1 minus M2 by M1 plus M2 times G. If everyone's using that, they're going to be ahead of you. So why not? This again goes back to knowing your tricks, but it's really about not ignoring your speed. In a lot of the LC questions, people take a lot of time to figure out what exactly is going to happen. Is the current going to die or is it going to persist in the inductor? I know I used to have that pro I, I used to have that problem a lot. And my physics teacher finally gave me a lot of problems and I became faster in those questions. And again, that'll help you because it's a competitive exam. I want to move on to chemistry and the first thing I want to talk about in chemistry is organic because that was my favorite subject. I had an amazing teacher, Mr. Ashish Mishra. And what he did for us in the last few months of preparation was to give us reagent sheets and daily practice problems. And his pile for organic chemistry problems was almost as high as the pile for math problems. And that helped a lot. He made us, the reagent sheets he made us write were chapter wise. So we knew if concentrated sulfuric acid appeared in alcohols and ethers, we knew its function. I don't remember it now, but we knew it then. And we knew if it appeared in uh, aldehydes and ketones, what it was supposed to do. So if you make them chapter wise, you really won't get confused on the final day of the exam because you don't want to, you don't want to mess up in those chain reaction questions where they just give like a bunch of uh, reagents and you don't know what the final product is. So if you get confused as to what the next product is, what the next product in the sequence is, you'll have no idea what the next reagent is. But if you're sure that I've only seen this reagent in one chapter and that is aldehyde and ketone. So the previous product must be an aldehyde or a ketone. And that way you'll be able to navigate those questions quicker than others. So yeah, reagent sheets, chapter wise, and daily practice for organic. I want to move on to physical chemistry. And here again, I want to emphasize the importance of formulae and constants. And there are some, you know, very trivial facts or constants in physical chemistry like the ionic product of water and its difference from KW and what is exactly the equilibrium constant for the dissociation of water. But these facts, these small factors of you know 18 or 14 or 2.303 will make the difference between the right answer and the wrong answer. So you have to be really clear about how the derivation came about, what the exact definition of these constants is A and KB. And if you can remember some of the, I would suggest as my teachers did to me that you remember as many of those constants as possible, the Ka and Kb and Pk and Pkb, because this I actually have the question proof for. Uh, in 2016 or some of one of the papers, there was a question in organic about finding the Pi point, isometric point or Pi point for an amino acid. And if you didn't know the data, it was pretty tough. Uh, lucky for us, our organic chemistry teacher always made the students in our campus memorize those Pi values, Pk and Pkb values. So they were able to do that question easily. So again, you should know a lot of data in physical chemistry too. And the last thing we have in chemistry is inorganic. And here I would like to again emphasize NCRD and paying attention to those special reagents or conditions in reactions. Especially the reactions where changing the ratio of the reactants can lead to different products altogether. I particularly remember messing up one question of this sort in mains. And my inorganic chemistry teacher would not talk to me for like a week. So yeah, pay attention to that unless you want to, you know, be disconnected from your teacher for a while. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this video, everything I had to offer, but I would like to just, you know, re-emphasize the importance of the last three months of preparation that you have. And again, it's, it's more important than the other times of your preparation, not only because you're closer to the exam, but also because there's, again, that overwhelming feeling to get tired and have second thoughts. And, you know, anyone who loses momentum at this time is, very, it's very likely to lose his final ranks. So, and I had to go through this phase like three times because they kept postponing and postponing the day at last exam because of the virus. So I understand how easy it is to get tired and to get, uh, you know, tired of all those teachers coming in and telling you to do your best because it's the last three months. But 
If you can stick it out now, the result will be much in your favor. Before we end the video, just a quick reminder to again like and share the video if you found the advice useful here and to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you are interested in more of these videos. I will be making repeated appearances on this channel and so will many other of you know my colleagues at IIT Bombay and other institutes and they'll share their stories about how they came to learn the facts about how you can ease the advanced. So that's that's been me for now. Thank you for watching this video.